Welcome to the fifth episode in a Legendarium series about Rome's great crisis of the third century. In this episode, Rise of the Gallic Empire, we will talk about how a renegade Roman commander named Posthumus was able to seize control of the western provinces, creating his own capital and helping to transform the Roman legions. Indeed, Posthumus's Gallic Empire would survive Rome's reigning emperor Gallienus by many years. After the capture of Emperor Valerian, his son Gallienus became sole emperor. And though Gallienus was a capable and energetic military commander, he did not inspire confidence or fear in the increasingly bold and mutinous military commanders along Rome's frontier. First, Gallienus faced a revolt led by Ingenuus, the governor of Pannonia. Fortunately for Gallienus, Ingenuus was quickly defeated and killed by a loyal commander. However, Gallienus faced a far more dangerous uprising led by Marcus Cassianus Latianus, the governor of Rome's two German provinces. Marcus is better known to history as Posthumus. As he started seizing control of the West, Posthumus sought out Gallienus's son, Solanius, who resided with a garrison at Colonia Agrippina under the command of Gallienus's supposedly loyal prefect, Silvanus. Posthumus laid siege to Silvanus's command at Colonia Agrippina. Soon enough, Silvanus decided that loyalty was more trouble than it was worth, surrendered Gallienus's son Solanius, and Posthumus quickly murdered him. This bold and ruthless action helped Posthumus to win more support from the Rhine legions, and with their help, he was able to seize control of Gaul, modern-day France, Spain, and even the island provinces of Britain after paying a visit to the island. Posthumus made his own capital at Augusta Trevatorum. He appointed two consuls, built his own amphitheater, formed his own Praetorian guard, and even created his own senate. Posthumus further added to his popularity by defeating attacks by the Franks and the Alamanni from across the Rhine. However, Posthumus made no effort to seize control of Rome. Indeed, Posthumus made it very clear that he was content to be emperor only of Rome's far western provinces. And perhaps for that reason, Gallienus allowed him to rule. During the joint reign of Gallienus and Posthumus, the Roman legions underwent a ongoing transformation. Armies increasingly had to function on their own, and not count on much support from either Rome or Augusta Trevatorum. Gallienus, for his part, created a new corps of heavily armored horsemen who resembled medieval knights. He also banned senators from holding military commands. At first, this might seem like a minor change, but it reflected a major power shift. In the past, high military commands went to ancient Roman families, most of whom came from Italy. But as the crisis of the 3rd century continued, these ancient aristocrats increasingly lost their right to command to upstart families who had clawed their way up through the ranks, and most of them came from either Gaul or the Danube provinces, and now they commanded the old aristocrats who used to look down their noses at them. The legions that these Gallic and Danubian commanders led were increasingly broken into smaller units, split into garrisons so they could respond more effectively to raiding parties coming across the Danube and the Rhine. Roman armor became less uniform, and legionaries simply used whatever they could get their hands on. It became more and more common to see Roman soldiers fighting in chainmail tunics and with spears, using square formations that resembled the phalanxes employed by ancient Greek and early Roman soldiers. In the year 265 AD, Gallienus decided that Posthumus had ruled long enough. He recruited a Roman commander named Aurelius, who held command in northern Italy, to help him 
restore the Gallic Empire to Roman rule, and avenge the death of his son Solanius. However, during a siege of one of Posthumus's garrisons, Gallienus was wounded by an arrow. Aurelius, perhaps sensing that the wind was blowing in Posthumus's direction, chose to switch sides, and Gallienus was forced to abandon his campaign and head back to the Danube River so he could fight against both the Goths and the disloyal commander Aurelius. About three years later, Gallienus was able to kill Aurelius in battle. One might think that was the beginning of a new age for Roman Gallienus, but only weeks afterwards, Gallienus was murdered by a conspiracy led by two of his own commanders, Aurelian and Claudius Gothicus, both of whom would become Roman emperors. This shows one of Rome's greatest problems during the crisis of the 3rd century. Even capable emperors were extremely vulnerable to murderous conspiracies simply because power now lay firmly with the army rather than the senate. And Rome's clearest sign of deterioration could be seen in the breakaway Gallic Empire, which continued to function even after Gallienus's death, and even after Posthumus died just a few years later. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.